today we are checking out the Milad XT 600 DM. This is an absolute tank of an e-bike. It's got dual motors, dual suspension, and can conquer almost any terrain. On top of that, it features a unique frame design and paint job that really makes this bike stand out from the rest. Let's quickly take a look at the specs of this bike and then take it out for our usual tests and see how it performs. This thing is a tank. Easy, easy peasy. Okay, the bike just shut off, interesting. Let's jump right in. Milad, ride with freedom. All right guys, so let's check out the features of the Milad XT 600 DM. We're gonna go ahead and start at the top. Standard hard rubberized grips and we've got our Tektro branded hydraulic disc brakes. Controls are right here. If you see here, this looks like it should have turn signals. It does not. This is actually a secondary switch to turn the lights on and off. High beam and low beam switch right here. And right here we've got the horn button. Let's go ahead and see what that sounds like. So you turn it on, hold the button down. There we go, Milad. Nice logo. This password, it does ask you for a password, but you can remove this if you want. So that's good to know. Here we go, horn. Sounds like a beep. The screen does change color the higher the pedal assist you go. So we went from green to blue, and now we're in red for extreme power. If you notice here, the default is set to the rear wheel drive. If you press down this power button right there, it'll then set it to front wheel drive or all wheel drive, which is the most fun. Battery display right there. And to turn on the front headlight, you hold down the plus button. And once that plus button is on, you do have to switch this fake turn signal switch either left or right, and then it will turn on or off. And we got our low beam and high beam switches. I know you guys can't really tell, but uh, it does make a big difference. This kickstand does get in the way of these pedals when going backwards. I don't know where else you would mount the kickstand, so just keep that in mind right over here that this kickstand will get in the way. And here in the back, you have your adjustable Fast Ace suspension. Battery on this bike is a 25 amp hour, 48 volt battery. This seat is on the wider side. However, it is pretty firm. Seven speed Shimano transmission with the derailleur protector. There's the Shimano turning derailleur. And we've got the smaller front chain ring up in the front, which means this is a sub 30 mile an hour pedaling bike. And this is a 750 watt nominal Bafang G062, which is a very, very reliable motor. And in the front, you actually get a G61, the same 750 nominal watt rating. And these motors are virtually identical, minus the place to mount a cassette or a freewheel, because this is a front hub motor. Overall, this bike is almost identical to its single motor little brother, the XT600. It has the same unique frame design, the same adjustable dual suspension, same bright front light, and the same hydraulic disc brakes with the massive 203 millimeter rotor in the front. The obvious major difference between these two models is that the dual motor version has way more power. Just be aware that if you use this additional power, you'll also be draining your battery a lot faster. This bike also comes with a 4.5 amp charger, which means your battery will charge a lot faster than some of the weaker two or three amp chargers that are in the market. The front motor of this model makes this an even heavier model. I weighed the XT600 and it was 92 pounds. This dual motor version comes in at a whopping 102 pounds. The wheels are painted red with circular cutouts where the red rim strip is exposed. You either love it or hate it. In person, it does look pretty cool. The tail light does work as a brake light and with the super bright front light, you'll easily be able to see in low light riding conditions. Here's what I look like on this bike at 5'10". When standing over this bike, I can just barely get my feet flat on the ground. And here's what the suspension travel looks like. And as you can see, there's plenty of suspension travel in the front and the rear. Lastly, I do want to mention that the photos and the videos of this bike don't do it justice. In person, it is such a good looking bike. 
it has all the right angles, and with the red and black paint job, it demands attention and will guarantee to turn heads as you ride by. The controller on this bike is unique in that it's a single controller that can give power to two motors. Each motor will peak at 22 amps, which at 48 volts is about 1056 watts. This means that the total power of this bike is about 2100 watts. I did increase the top speed of this bike in the settings and I was able to get the free spinning wheel up to just about 33 to 34 miles an hour. So those are the specs of this bike. Let's take it out for our usual tests and see how it performs. Today we're on a new Milad bike. This is the bigger brother of the XT600. It is the dual motor version, the XT600DM. And we're gonna do all the tests, all the range tests, the hill climbing tests, the speed tests on this bike. So you guys can know if it is worth buying or not. Fully, freshly charged battery, starting off with the moderate hill climb test. We've got our GPS speedometer on. Let's set this bad boy all the way to PAS4. I don't know if you guys caught that, but the screen actually turns red when you increase the power level. Did I say PS4? I meant PAS5. So here we go. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Three, two, one, throttle. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We got to switch to dual motors. Oh my goodness. There we go. Without further ado, now let's let this car pass. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, boom. Oh, there you go. Great acceleration off the line. God, I love dual motorbikes. Look at that. We're already at 20 miles an hour. What the hell? Oh, 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 oh my God. Guys, this is my first time out on this thing. Wow, this bike is fast. Okay. Jesus Christ, we're already at 25 miles an hour. Past that fire hydrant. That's impressive. That's actually impressive. I'm gonna be really curious to see what the time is, but let's check out the downhill speed. Let's get up to speed. Downhill top speed. See what the motor tops out at. Topping out at about 36. All right. And just a friendly reminder, if you guys like content like this, Feel free to subscribe if I've earned your subscription. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Hit the like button if you like this video. If you don't like it, let me know why. Let me know your problem. Tell them why you're mad. Tell me in the comments below. Accessories that I have on this bike. Gub phone mount, mirror, flashing LED light on the back. If you guys are interested in accessories like that, Check out the links in the description below. It does help the channel at no extra cost to you. And as you guys know, it will help fund my e-bike addiction. I mean, it will help fund extra gadgets and accessories that I can use to film for this channel. Wow, a little bit of wheel spin on the, uh, the front. Okay, this is exciting. This is exciting. We're coming up to the proving ground, the steep hill climb. All right. So as always, we start at this line. It's not timed. I just see if this bike can do it or not. 48 volts, dual motor. Here we go, boom. A Little bit of the delay. There's that delay on the throttle. Damn. That's cool, wow. Guys, I am very impressed. This is 13 miles an hour up this uh, hill. That's, uh, that's interesting. That's really good. This thing has some power. And uh, one of the things that we're doing in this bike is a range test. And as you guys know, the more power you have, the more battery you use up. So I'm curious to see what the range is like with the type of riding that I do. Let's do a quick brake test from 20 miles an hour. Here we go. Yeah. As to be expected from hydraulic disc brakes, especially with the front 203 millimeter rotor, braking is just simply not an issue. Let's check out what the pedaling is like at higher speeds. Let's see where this thing 
likes the ghost pedal. I think it has the same gearing as the XT600, which started to ghost pedal around 25. Yeah. Uh, I can get actually up to about 30 with this one. 30 miles an hour. I am moving my legs relatively quickly, but I do have some resistance there, so that's great. Right now I'm just coasting, I'm not accelerating. I try and save some battery on the way to the top speed run. So right now we're just coasting downhill. I wanna save as much battery as possible for the top speed run. We're gonna go down and back on the same road to make sure we get an accurate top speed and we negate the effects of wind and gravity, or at least as much as we can. Here I go on the road again. All right, I'll stop. What, you don't wanna hear my amazing voice? All right, so we're just gonna take our time, headed over on single motor to the top speed testing zone. By the way, this bike does have cruise control. So if you hold it down at a certain speed for a while, it does lock you into that speed. However, I do believe that if you just hold down the throttle 100%, it knows to just give you 100%. And that is the only kind of cruise control that I like. Because some bikes, if you hold the throttle down for, I think, eight seconds, no matter what speed you're at, it'll lock you in. So if you're trying to accelerate, nope, too bad. You're locked into whatever speed the cruise control thinks you want at the eight second mark. But this one, if you just hold it down, full blast, it knows. Okay, this guy just wants full blast. Let's give him all the beans. So right now we're not using any power, just coasting down to the top speed range test site. These tires, these Kenda tires, they're not too loud, they're not too quiet though. They are knobby tires, so you can expect them to make a little bit of noise. It is the nature of this tire. However, if you're getting a dual motor bike, the only reason to get a bike like this besides more power is more traction. These dual motor bikes are really good for off-road situations. And so you probably want knobby tires. Get up here on the sidewalk. Cruising on down. Dual suspension. Obviously there will not be any issues whatsoever when it comes to bumps. The shocks on this bike are fantastic. Tons of travel on the front especially. So the ride is plush. The seat could be a little bit squishier. That would be nice. It is on the firmer side, but thank God for that suspension. That does make it a lot more tolerable. The big 26 inch by four inch tires do also help roll over bumps. They make you feel bumps less than smaller wheels. So the wheels plus the suspension gives this bike almost like a Cadillac type of ride. And it is a big bike. It feels like you are riding on something you're not one with the machine you're really on a big machine if you like that kind of ride this would be a great bike for you so as always this top speed test will be throttle only we're going dual motors of course i am going to put my visor down and tuck my head down and we're going to be testing the zero to 20 at the same time so here we go let's get in position top speed test three two one boom Dual motor, baby. Let's go. This thing's got some pull. All right, we're at 20 already. Damn, this thing is great. Oh, yeah, baby. 30. Hell, yeah. All right, we got 31. Full speed. I'm tucked down. 32, okay. All right. All right, we got 32 one way. Let's turn around and do the same thing back. I'm gonna pedal a little bit on the way back to get this bike up to speed, since we're not doing the zero to 20 test anymore. Let's wait for this traffic to pass. Here we go. Pedal, 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 pedal. Yeah, I get resistance up to 30 with this. That's nice. 31, 32, all right. 
Look, that looks like the speedometer is pretty much accurate. It's like dead on. 32 miles an hour. All right. Guys, I have an irrational emotional attachment to this little drone I got. This thing is adorable. It's like a little pet. And what makes this even worse is that it's so cute. It takes off from your hand and lands in your hand. It's adorable. We gotta name this drone, guys. Let me know if you have any ideas for names for this cute little drone. There we go. All right, buddy. Hello. All right, it sees me. Do you see me, buddy? All right, let's go. Off-roading time. Yeah, riding in the grass like this, this is nothing for this bike. All right, buddy. Back home. Good boy. All right, here we go. Do a little bit off-roading. We got some serious bumps coming up. I usually like to take this thing at about 15 miles an hour or so. Test the suspension. If you took this thing on a moderate off-road trail with gravel roads, small bumps, this is pretty much what your riding would be like. Oh yeah, shocks feel great. Oh yeah. And the dual motors just powers through everything. Oh yeah like butter this thing is a tank it's like it's like bumps what bumps you call that a bump yeah that pet that last bump that i just did that would be very jarring for any other bike easy easy peasy Traction on the tires is fantastic. That was great. I try and do the same ride over and over again with my e-bikes to give you guys some consistency and myself some consistency so I know how to differentiate each bike. Because if you're doing a different ride over and over again for your reviews, you don't really know what to compare it to. But this way we do the same ride over and over again and you get a good idea of what the bike is like compared to other bikes. And as always, we are waiting for traffic. Story of my life. One eternity later. Dual motors really helps a lot with crossing streets. You get across that street quickly. Anyone that is against high-powered e-bikes, just remember that. High-powered e-bikes offer you safety when you need quick acceleration and so you're at higher speeds or on traffic, so you don't become an obstacle. We're gonna switch into single motor for a second, just because we're on flat roads and I don't really need two motors right now. Pedaling this bike feels nice. I do feel the suspension bouncing up and down in the back, and that is actually not a good thing when you're pedaling. That means the power is going into the shocks instead of the wheel. And so there are ways to lock out the front suspension. I know the rear is adjustable, so you can make it a little bit firmer. So if you do like to pedal and you want your power to be going into your wheels, you can firm up that rear shock. And the seat on this bike is exactly the same as the seat on the XT600 bench seat on the firmer side. And so thankfully that shock does help the seat be more tolerable. I wish it was a little bit squishier, but that's okay. It does look cool, it's a cool looking seat. Seven speeds, trigger shifter feels nice. Once again, it is a trigger shifter, so it's slightly in the way of the throttle. Just keep that in mind. Horn, the horn is kind of like a beeping sound, just like its little brother. The display does look nice. I think it's about the same size display. It doesn't, I don't see any kind of meter for watts or voltage. So that's too bad. 
Just tells you your average speed, which level pedal assist you are, and total distance. All right, guys, it is getting a little bit later. It's about 4.30. Why don't we get out of the middle of the road so traffic can flow normally? And we are throwing on the heated gloves, ladies and gentlemen. Save your heated gloves. Link in the description below. Boom. Here we go. This headlight is going to help a lot. So we've been riding around for about nine miles. A mix of pedaling, dual motor and single motor. And the battery doesn't have segmented sections that I can say three out of five or three out of four. It's just kind of one bar that slowly drains down. So honestly, I don't know what the range will be. I don't know. I can't even give you a reference. I would say right now the battery is at, I don't know, 75% based on what it looks like, maybe 70, 65%. But we're gonna stay on dual motors now. Oh, that power. This thing has some juice. I love that. It could use a bigger top gear for sure because when you go fast, especially after 25, you do lose some pedal resistance unless you want to pedal really fast. I do wish that the front chain ring was a little bit bigger. You would get a lot more pedal resistance at higher speeds over 30, but that's actually an easy fix. I've done that to multiple bikes now. Add a couple chain links, add that bigger chain ring. Might cost you like 50, 70 bucks, no big deal. So far, the seat is decently comfortable. It's not bad, even though it is on the harder side, as always, the suspension does help with a harder seat. It's a little bit more forgiving, it's a little bit more forgivable when you have suspension because that will give you some cushion instead of the seat. Let's test out the cruise control. So check this out. We're gonna try and stay at 10 miles an hour. So I'm holding it. Three, two, one, zero. And now we're staying at 10 and you don't have to hold it down. Just kind of nice if you don't want to constantly hold the throttle. And now we're just going to cruise around a bit, use up some battery. Let's test these shocks, how it is getting off curbs. Not bad. I did have my butt off the seat though. The front did feel very nice. I'll tell you what, these dual motors, they really make this bike feel alive. I feel like I'm on a motorcycle. So much power. Oh yeah, the suspension helps so much. Soaks up all the bumps. One important thing to remember about dual motors is to try not to use the front around turns because there's less weight on the front and it does lose traction easier than the back. So if you're turning or you're in a situation that doesn't have a lot of traction, like you're in the sand, on leaves, definitely don't turn because you might fall. That front wheel can lose traction easily. Although this does start you off easy. It doesn't have all that much power. It's still after all a 48 volt system with a 22 amps being sent to the front. Let's try and jump this curb right now. Oh, so easy with the big wheels and the shocks. All right, we're gonna head back with dual motors. Let's try and use up some juice. And let's see what the speed is like when this battery is at. Looks like it's at about 70% somewhere around there. I see this light very clearly. I'm very happy about that. The light looks great. Look at that. It's not even all that dark out and I see this light very clearly and that makes me happy because I will be seen easily. Let's jump this curb again. Oh yeah. Easy peasy. Down the hill we go. Man, this bike is a tank. Oh, it just goes. Let's see what the top speed is like at 70% battery. All right, so you're still getting, what? We're looking at 28, 29, okay. Ah, oh, so soft on the suspension. I jumped that curb so easily. I am really loving this bike, guys. 
As for pricing this bike, I can't mention anything about that because Mila told me, based on the feedback that they've been getting on this bike, they feel like they should reduce the price a bit. And I think that's what they're gonna be doing. So I can't say the price on this bike yet because I honestly won't know. They might bring it down and I would give you a wrong number. So check the link in the description below if you do want more info on the pricing of this bike because it might be lower than you think. Yeah, we're still getting a top speed of 29, even on a battery that's almost at 50%. Cruise control, again, I don't need to hold down the throttle the whole time. Cruise control will help me out there. Climbing up this hill, no sweat. Jesus, at 25 miles an hour. Yeah, the bumps are nothing with these shocks. They feel great. And that was a big divot in the uh, sidewalk that I just hit. That was like nothing. It was fantastic, guys. Fantastic. This headlight is great. Very, very, very bright headlight. Oh yeah, plenty of torque from a standstill. Perks of an e-bike, skip all the traffic. Yeah, I can pedal, I get some resistance at 28. Just look at this headlight, guys. If you want a bike for nighttime riding, this would be great. Nice, big, bright front light. Okay, the bike just shut off. Interesting. So the bike just shut off. All right. What happened there? Let's see if it turns back on. That's weird. The battery totally died on me. I see no light from the battery at all. And it looked like the gauge was maybe at like 60%, something like that. What happened? So I'll have to investigate that. I'll let you guys know what that's all about later on in the video. But right now my GPS says we got 12.64 miles. No idea what happened there. And the battery indicator said that I had plenty of battery left, maybe like 60, 60%, I would say. All right, guys, give you an update later. All right, guys, so see this right here? This is a a decent hill. Let's try and pedal up this at no power. I told you guys, this is a heavy dual motor bike and this is the downside of most e-bikes, but especially these heavier ones. I'm riding this thing like a normal bike now. I'm putting my power and my weight into this, into the pedals. And it ain't easy guys. We're gonna be pedaling this thing back at five to 10 miles an hour. I can burn some extra calories at least. I've been eating a whole lot. A lot of chicken wings, pizzas. And this is God's way of saying, you know, Alex, you need to lose a couple of pounds. Let's go ahead and uh, shut off your battery on your heavy e-bike oh, we're up that hill okay all right oh we got a downhill part what a treat let's see if we can get some speed all right here we go speed momentum come on baby yeah the battery is just even the bar on the battery itself isn't lighting up at all. I have no idea why. All right guys, so it is another day. I did get the battery fixed. I got the battery fuse fixed, which is actually an easy fix. And something I wanna mention about the battery fuse is that the battery fuse is a safety mechanism to prevent the battery from discharging faster than the cells can provide because what happens is that if the controller that you put in let's say someone shunt mods the controller and they are they request way too many amps from the battery then the battery can actually deliver safely at least the beat the fuse in the battery burns out and it stops the battery from working and it prevents it from melting which is a good thing right and a second line of defense, usually the BMS also 
does the same thing. Sometimes people remove the fuse. What I did is I just replaced the fuse. I replaced the fuse and the fuse housing. I did tell Milad what happened and they were even offering to have this battery uh, brought over to a, a, a battery repair place and have it fixed for me and pay for everything. And they did mention to me that this is an issue in older generations and it's not an issue anymore, which I do believe because there's another reviewer who did a review on this exact same bike and rode this thing really hard through the sand and it held up just fine. But today is the second day and we fixed the battery fuse. Let's see how it goes. We're gonna ride this thing around a little bit and I am gonna push it with the dual motors to see how my new fuse does. And I didn't charge the battery anymore. Wherever it stopped, that's where it stopped. The bike was shut down and I did pedal this thing after the sun went down all the way back to my house. Pedaled it back about a, about a mile, which thankfully is not that bad. But I did learn what it was like to pedal a, a bike that was, uh, what, 120 pounds pretty much? with just my legs so in case you guys are interested in something like that let's say you're buying a bike and you're like okay i want to make sure and it can pedal this thing without any power it is doable with this bike because it does have that smaller front chain ring that is the upside about a smaller front chain ring your gearing will be lower so at lower pedal assist levels or in my case no power the gearing is going to be great and it is good to know at least that milad is working on updating bikes and fixing small issues like that because a lot of companies don't do that and i am experienced with certain companies that have sent out products later to find out that certain things that say that they send out uh maybe break or malfunction and they quickly fix that in the manufacturing process for example i did buy a secondhand bike that had most of it, it had about half the magnets come off inside the motor. The adhesive behind the magnets came off. I honestly think there was no adhesive at all. And this company did fix that issue in later versions of the bike. That was something that they fixed relatively quickly. And I do appreciate that Milad does that as well. Well, right now we're gonna just gun it. We're gonna use those two motors and just joyride around this random neighborhood. This random neighborhood's gonna be like this guy riding around on his motorcycle looking e-bike just flying around. Let's call the cops on him. I know his bike is more than class two. I know it's not a class two bike. I know that goes more than 28 miles an hour. Anyways, we're just gonna roll around here. It's actually uh, a bit warmer today in New England. I wanted to shoot the rest of this video today because we're getting a bunch of rain later. And uh, I'm not a fan of riding my bike in the rain. I gotta say, I know for some of you true purists out there, you guys, I guess, are just better than me, but I don't wanna do that, sorry. This bike does feel so zippy. Even at what looks like 50% battery, the bar is showing about 50%. Feels nice and zippy, love it. The, those dual motors really do give you plenty of power, but they could handle more. These are uh, 750 watt nominal Bafang G60 and G61 motors. Actually, no, excuse me. I think it might be a G62 in the back. We'll show it on the screen later. But these motors, even the 750 watt nominal ones, can actually handle more than this bike is giving them. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Future mods for this bike are on the way. So one other thing I did want to mention about this bike, just like its little brother, the XT600, this dual motor version also comes with a torque sensor. And since this has more power, you feel that torque sensor working a lot. So let's say we start in pedal assist one, All right? Pedal assist one, if you pedal slow, you feel the motors just a little bit, right? You pedal harder and the motors do work more. And that's just brought up to a higher intensity level, the higher the pedal assist level. So for example, if you're still pedaling slow and not giving force, it'll still give you a low amount of power. Doesn't matter which pedal assist level you're in. But once you start pushing harder, 
like pedal assist five will really give you a lot of power right this is pretty much giving me full power so if you guys are into torque sensors which do provide you with lots of exercise even with this dual motor version check this bike out you might like it and again on the note of price since a certain youtuber did review this bike Mila did tell me that they've gotten a lot of feedback that the price is too high what their original uh, $3,700 price is too high and I agree for that amount uh, you know you could easily get a Talaria XXX or multiple other e-bikes multiple other dual motor e-bikes actually yeah let's push it let's push this motor we got two motors guys we're gonna use them we're gonna climb this hill and so they are interested in adjusting the price so as always I would tell you the price but I don't know it might change so I don't know what the price is gonna be I will leave links to this bike in the description below um, the link to their website it's not an affiliate link so you can just check it out see what it is if you do find it cheaper somewhere else maybe on Amazon I know they sell their XT600 on Amazon if you do find it somewhere else cheaper feel free to grab it but that'd be cool if the price for this bike was brought down it does have some pretty nice components but for $3,700 uh, I don't know it's not that nice so check out the link in the description below for the most updated and recent price because they told me they are interested in changing it I right, give you guys a quick mileage readout looks like the battery is at I would say 30 percent 33 percent and we're at we're reading 16.5 miles and by the way guys with this bike having the smaller chain ring I'm not doing that much pedaling I should probably go to a different neighborhood you guys are getting sick of this one riding position wise this does have a lower handlebar than some other e-bikes it is not adjustable however that is easily fixable switching out your handlebars and adding a riser stem or BMX bars whatever you want that's easily fixable so if you want a different riding position that's a relatively inexpensive and easy fix but the stock handlebars are lower it gives you more of that mountain bike type feel so you are putting a little bit more pressure on your hands which if you like maximum control with your handlebar that's obviously a good thing there is a reason why mountain bikes don't have high rise handlebars so final thoughts on the Milad XT600 DM DM for dual motor power is fantastic if you guys like fast bikes you will like this bike and no I'm not just talking about top speed although this bike is on the faster side I am talking about acceleration with dual motors you get exceptional hill climbing ability and exceptional acceleration and that's really where it counts you want torque because it doesn't take all that much power to go on flat ground 30 miles an hour but it does take a lot of power to go fast up a hill it takes a lot of power and that's where a lot of e-bikes sometimes shine or miserably fail and this one does shine it does have a 25 amp hour battery but with dual motors and you cranking on the throttle all the time you will use up that battery pretty quickly so if you do want exercise and you want to put in your own leg power this bike is perfect for you because it has that torque sensor so you will work together with the machine it won't just do all the work however if you're not a fan of torque sensors which not everyone likes it some people just want mostly throttle all the time maybe light pedaling maybe a torque sensor is not for you if you did add a second battery to this bike oh man it would be amazing like if it had another 20 amp hour battery on this wow this bike would be great and it does have room underneath plenty of room underneath for a second battery uh, the fuse issue I think Milad is fixing that in the newest revisions of this bike so shouldn't be an issue apparently I'm one of the unlucky ones and even then they were nice enough to tell me we'll have you bring it over to a bike shop we'll pay for the repair and that's good that they are communicative about that dual suspension excellent suspension guys plenty of travel in these shocks and they are both adjustable this bike is on the heavier side so just be aware if you have any kind of issues with lifting lots of weight 
This might not be the bike for you unless you are never going to lift it. Handling does feel fine with these e-bikes. Weight doesn't matter nearly as much as with regular bikes. A lot of the parts on this bike are very high quality. Excellent brakes. Very good stopping power on the brakes. Oh my god. Really good brakes. And I gotta say, I started editing the video of the first part of this ride and just looking at it in the video, it really looks amazing. This is such a cool looking bike. The way they did the paint job and the lines of this bike and the geometry, it's such a cool looking bike. I love it. Milad makes some of the best looking e-bikes. Seat comfort is okay. If that rear suspension were not there, the firmer seat would be a problem, but it's not bad because the shock is absorbing a lot of the bumps. But if you can figure out a way to make this seat softer, maybe reupholster it, maybe add some kind of pad or, or something like that, it would be very, very, very comfortable. But this seat is okay for short to medium rides. For longer rides, you probably wanna make some modifications. For night riding, this bike is great. Giant headlight. And I was riding this thing later in my first part of the review and the headlight really helped a lot. I think I was ranting about the headlight as the bike fuse cut out. So even at, yeah, even at lower battery amounts, I'm probably at like 25%. Plenty of hill climbing ability. The display looks fantastic. Ah, so the battery bar just turned red. I don't know what that would equate to in terms of battery percentage. But uh, maybe what I'll start doing is uh, going home and checking these batteries with a multimeter. Yeah, that's what I'll do. And that way you guys have a better idea of what exactly the, perc the percentage is at. I try and make these reviews as accurate and as full of technical information as I can while not boring you to death. So I'll put up on the screen what the ending voltage is. We're going to end this ride at just about 21 miles. And as you can see, I'm not really doing all that much pedaling. This is pretty much mostly throttle using dual motors going fast or as fast as this thing can go. Yeah, it just eats up the bumps. That's it for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, like the video, feel free to subscribe if I have earned your subscription. Until next time.